we've had a, a great kind of half day. We've had uh, discussions from uh, people from all over the industry talking about uh, state of affairs, e-commerce, entertainment, culture, leadership. So lots of lots of interesting discussions. Uh, Betty, maybe you can start off by just introducing yourself, let people know who you are, what you do. Sure. So thank you so much, Josh, for um, for having me on this um, on this virtual digital media summit. It's very very cool. And uh, I might have to steal your idea too for us at the, at the NYSE. Um, so I am uh, I'm the executive vice chairman at the New York Stock Exchange. I'm also the chief experience officer at Intercontinental Exchange, and we're one of the you know how to describe the company is really one of the leading um, financial services companies or financial tech companies out there. We own over 14 exchanges, but of course the one that people know most of is the New York Stock Exchange, you know, the most iconic brand, 228 year old company. And my role really is to engage with our customers. We have 2,200 listed companies on the NYSE. We have thousands of trading customers, um, hedge funds uh, and others, and so you know, my job really is to is to link all of these different constituents together, provide value for them, and you know, we are as well as I'm sure you and many other companies out there are thinking about how do we engage and add value for our customers in this post or in this COVID world right now. Great. And I know you, 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 you speak with CEOs from around the world, right? And yeah. part of your, your position, what, what are people saying out there? What's the mood? Um, we know what it's like in the U S but what, is it the same everywhere else or what's the, what do you well, think? Well, CEOs and leaders are natural born optimists, right? So you don't hear a lot of, um, you know, even if they may be worried on the inside, you certainly don't hear that on the outside externally. Um, Certainly the CEOs of some of the most battered industries, the energy, hotel, um, you know, travel and leisure, hospitality. I mean, they are right now um, just in crisis mode. So, uh, you know, we at the NYSE have been talking with them about how we can help them. We've given, given some of these companies fee relief or allowed them to, you know, delay some of their, um, their payments, et cetera. Um, so we're trying to find ways to, you know, to help these companies out too. Um, but CEOs in general are really turning their attention to, you know, what are the silver linings? How can they help in this crisis? Um, and what are the silver linings for their own businesses? You know, a lot of people are thinking now, you know, what is this whole post-COVID world, go world going to look like where, you know, I think people are going to continue to want a social distance. People are going to be much more um, aware of, of hygiene and, and staying healthy and, a, a lot more accepting of doing things online, just like this, right? I mean, who would have thought, Josh, that you and I would be, uh, you know, hosting a fireside chat uh, virtually, and that we would, we would we would have people joining in on that and engaged. So, so I think that's what you know. That's what I'm hearing from a lot of folks is just, you know, how are they going to run their businesses now when it's really going to be digital first going forward. And for your business, so so much of you know the New York Stock Exchange is that iconic building, and you know I've been to some of your your beautiful events, you know dinners hosted on the floor of the exchange, and you know big boardroom discussions. How do you how do you adapt for the future? Like what what are things that you guys and you and your management team are thinking about? Well, I don't think that we're going to be getting rid of anytime soon all physical venues, you know, and and just when you mention the floor, you know it brings back so many memories. It's been about a month since I've, well, it hasn't been quite a month, about three weeks since I've been back. I mean, nothing replaces, you know, and I, I'm a little biased here, but really nothing replaces being there on that floor. And, you know, I call it, you know, I jokingly call it the church of capitalism. You know, you walk in there and it's, and it's just, you know, it's such an amazing, um, amazing space. And, and it's, you know, it's free to use for all of our listed companies. I think that, you know, I think we'll, we'll probably see things scaled back a little bit or maybe thinned out. Um, you know, it, it may not be that people may not want to, you know, be congregating hundreds and hundreds of people at the same time, but I think people will still be congregating. I think people will still be, you know, there's nothing that substitutes face-to-face -face interaction. I mean, there just, there just isn't. Um, but I think that, you know, there'll be different forms of it. So, you know, so in, maybe instead of a dinner for 50 people, it might be a dinner for 25. Um, so things like that. So that's what we're kind of, we're kind of working through right now. And, and I, I think others are as well. Yeah. 
agreed that nothing beats the, the 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 real life experience. I mean, the virtual happy hours are fun, but I think everyone's waiting for the uh, the real life happy hours to start again. Yeah. Um, what I mean from also from talking to different CEOs and uh, from your position, like what what do you see changes in industries? Uh, any any kind of trends you're keeping an eye on? Yeah, you know, I've had a couple of conversations. I happen to know a lot of the real estate CEOs. And, you know, so we've talked a lot about, um, you know, particularly in the commercial real estate space, office space. And, you know, there's some, there obviously are some conversations around how, you know, given the, uh, uh, given the virtual nature that people may be more adaptable to, to, to virtual workspaces that maybe we might see office space um, demand for that go down. But I actually tend to think that, that it might actually go up. And, and the reason why is I've spoken to a few folks who say that um, you know, companies have to start thinking about, about offering more space and distance for their employees. So you might see bigger meeting rooms. You might see, you know, instead of a, a company renting one, one floor, they may have to rent two in order to keep their people more spaced apart. You may see employees demanding more that they have, you know, phone booths so that they can be in there, you know, one on one, uh, having conversations versus being in a public space. So that might actually increase the amount of um, uh, the amount of office space that is, you know, that is being, uh, th you know, that is being asked for. And then other stuff around the edges, you know, um, uh, I think contactless technology is going to continue to is going to actually be accelerated from this. I mean, when I think about it now, I remember during this crisis in the very beginning when I was like buying goods, you know, when I was buying stuff at the grocery store, um, I went to Trader Joe's because I liked the fact that I could just use my phone, my Apple Pay and just swipe, right? I didn't like, I suddenly started to notice that, I, that for other places I had to like, you know, draw my signature. So I think just contact less technology mm -hmm. is going to, you know, is going to increase. And, um, and, and, I, and I think also just... Uh, I also think just people are going to be much more, um, uh, much more used to having their information online. So telehealth and telemedicine is going to be, you know, very likely accelerated in all of this. Yeah, yeah, and I think on the just on that trend, I've heard discussions around like digital health passports. You know, so yeah. you know because there could be a phased uh, approach, right, a reemergence of society, right. So it could be the people that have had it that are immune, maybe, or maybe people who've gotten the vaccine early, or whatever the the cases you may have to have that information stored on your phone. I think, and in, I think China, some companies are actually leading that. And they're doing that already, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think in China already, you're seeing that there's apps out there, delivery apps, where you, as the consumer, can actually see the body temperature of your delivery person, which is incredible. So you can monitor, you know, whether or not you want this person delivering your food or or what or your groceries. You know, stuff like that, I think, is going gonna, is gonna to just take off here. Um, and we're thinking about that ourselves, of course, right? Like, we have hundreds and hundreds, thousands of people come through our doors every day at the NYSC. So, you know, we need to also think about how we monitor and what are the, you know, procedures coming in to, into our space. Yeah. And you're, I know you have clients and companies from, from Asia. Are they, are they starting to see a rebound? Like, are your Chinese-based companies, are, are listings going to start happening again? What's the, what, you know, kind of what's the forecast like? So sorry, I'm just moving because I'm noticing that my <laughs> the, the sun there you go. That's, as, that's as, good. as the sun is setting. Um, you got some branding in the back too. So. Yeah, and me being a TV person, I want to have proper lighting yeah. here. Um, <laughs> um, in, in terms of you know, a lot of people have asked like since our so the last day our floor was open um, was March. Uh, well, actually it closed on March 20th. Um, the uh, so a lot of people have asked, like, you know, your floor is closed. What does that mean? So our floor is closed, but we're open for business. And that means that we've had companies still that have done secondary offerings on the exchange. We've had several companies um, spin off, do spin offs uh, and, and list on the NYSC. And eventually we're going to have IPOs. You know, it's been a little quiet, as you can well imagine, over the last several weeks. But, you know, that pipeline is still there. Um, as you just mentioned in China, there's several Chinese companies that are, you know, they're, they're a little bit ahead of the curve here in terms of their business getting back to normal. So, you know, there's certainly companies that need to raise capital and want to, you know, go public. Um, so, you know, so I think that IPO pipeline is, is very likely going to come back. And, you know, I think the second half of the year is probably going to be quite busy. 
Great. And, I, and you mentioned, you know, your TV, your, your TV days. Um, so some of the people here may not know that you were an anchor for, for Bloomberg for many years. What's yep. your predictions on media? How does, does media change at all because of this, for, you know, reporting, news, et cetera? I think so. Um, I just think that, the, you know, a lot of established media brands that, um, you know, that have been in print are going to have to think even more about their digital strategy, their, their digital first strategy. Um, I think that, uh, I think that the consumption of information is going to just only increase even more. And, you know, some of the content verticals that were, uh, that were very popular might have to now, you know, it might be that we might see a, a mix of that. We might see that, you know, health information is going to be that much more, um, you know, is going to increase even more. And I also think that, you know, one interesting aspect of all of this that I've noticed um, that is related to media companies is how much user generated content is happening on, in chat rooms and how much, um, you know, like we've seen this even ourselves, like our customers are sharing best practices among themselves and looking for expert advice. And I think media companies are starting to not not only starting, but I think they're offering that kind of platform for their customers. So I just saw the Wall Street Journal launch this new um, this new product called Ask WSJ, where you can ask you know the journalists and some of their um, you know some of their experts. You can ask them anything you know within like a a, a set time in real time. So I think there that that need for information right away. I think media companies can be right at the center of that. That's great. And, uh, and actually, one, one piece of news I saw is that one of the trends, and probably a good thing, that partisan news is way down in terms of where people are <laughs> at the source of news. And it's, it's kind of the mainstream news sources and then things like CDC and W Health Organization. So yep. uh, hopefully one of the silver linings could be kind of returned to the truth. Um, Absolutely. Which, yeah, I mean, I just love to end on like a positive affirmation. Anything, you know, anything that you, what are you optimistic about, you know, going forward? Anything that kind of gives you uh, just, you know, a smile and kind of when you're dealing with all this? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, as long as, obviously, knock on wood, as long as, you know, as long as we're all, um, we're all, we're all healthy, this has actually been a really good time for us to just, st you know, step back and, and assess like what are the things that are important to us you know where do we want to go as a country where do we want to go you know as a you know as a as a people um and i just think that you know having for me personally having this moment here where i can spend time with my family um where i can think about you know what is what is the future going to look like i think just presents a lot of opportunity like i think it's actually really really exciting when we get through this period, which feels so devastating right now, I actually think this world is going to be even more exciting for us. So, you know, we've seen that with every crisis. Look, we've been through this before, not this particular thing, but we, were, we went through 9-11, mm. we went through 08, um, we went through the dot-com crash. I mean, we've all been through these crises. So, you know, maybe some of your attendees who are on the younger side won't remember all of them. I do. I'm a little bit on the older side, <laughs> but, um, but we always come back stronger than before. So I'm actually really excited about the opportunities out there. Great. Well, that's, that's great advice. Um, thank you, Betty. I, I just want to finish off. We have a little video from direct agents that we wanted to show um, kind of on that, that note, our own kind of thank you, positive affirmations. Um, so maybe we can tee that up. Great. We are hurting, but we are strong. We are resilient, but we are caring. We are apart, but we are together. We will unite and overcome adversity, supporting each other, loving each other. You are my hero. You're amazing. Celebrating one another. I'm proud of you. 
Together as one, we will rejoice this beautiful life. Very powerful. Thank you. Yeah, and we can't wait for the bell to start ringing again on the, the exchange. I mean, it's an iconic part of, of I think, of New York, of, of the U.S. economy. So, you know, hopefully we see that soon. Yeah, we can't either. And, and if I might just say one more thing about that, um, I love that. I love that video. Um, we've been running a gratitude campaign where hashtag gratitude, where we've been honoring all of the companies that are listed on the exchange that have been helping in the crisis. So, you know, I just want to take this moment to also thank them as well. Great. Oh, when thanks. The leadership thanks. comes out. Thanks for sharing that. Thanks for all of our attendees, our, our, our co-hosts throughout the day. Uh, it's, it's a really interesting, interesting experience. I'm sure we'll continue the conversation. Betty, I can't wait to have another chat with you, hopefully in a few weeks or, you know, maybe uh, over more positive news. But, Me uh, too. Thanks again. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Thank you for having uh, me.